Hey everyone, Jay here from Modern Mississauga. Just a quick video on the 2020 Mazda 3. Yes, I've done a full review on one of them and I'll link that in the description as well as at the end of the video. But I just got back from a four day road trip in Northern Pennsylvania along their famous Route 6. And I just wanna kinda highlight why it's one of my favorite new vehicles of the year. Let's get rid of that weird reflection, there we go. So first off, it's fuel economy. And again, for all the vehicles I could have had for this road trip, I purposely chose the 2020 Mazda 3 because it was just me. I wanted something not too small and I did have an option to pick up the new um, MX-5, but it was just a little too small. I wanted some a little bit of space, a little extra comfort for my drive. So fuel economy, right off the bat, I did about 1,400 kilometers. I think it's uh, 1,365, 66, and I got 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers which is phenomenal for the vehicle. Now, I think it's rated as a combined 7.9. So uh, getting 6.6 .6, uh, is great. It's only a 50 liter tank as well uh, for regular fuel. So um, even though it's their 2.5 liter engine that's got 186, ho ho bleh, 186 horse and 186 pound feet of torque, it performed very well. Uh, it's very quick, it's very brisk, and I, it's one of my favorite engines as well because you still have a ton of power and uh, you still get a lot of fuel efficiency. Sorry, not a lot. You get minimal fuel, uh, no, that's completely, you know when something makes sense in your head, but when you spit it out, it doesn't work. Uh, it's great on gas, let's go with that. So again, I got 6.6 .6 and it's rated at 7.9 combined. Um, so fuel economy, huge plus there. The seats are very comfortable. You know, they don't look as, comfortable as they are and not a shot against Mazda for that but just I've seen bigger side bolsters and I've seen um, bigger thigh bolsters but just the way this is situated it is it's nearly perfect for me um, I make a couple of tweaks but for my big road trip um, these seats were delightful and that's cruising along interstates that is sitting in traffic on the 401 trying to get out of Canada <laughs> I love Canada, I'm just saying, 401 traffic, kind of sucks. QBW traffic, kind of sucks. So fuel efficiency is great, and the seats are great. Uh, the handling, it's just, it's Mazda, it's great. And um, I think Mazda does handling the best out of non-luxury brands. Um, the cornering, the handling, the, the precision of it, and just the way it feels. And there's some great twisty, turny roads up in Northern Pennsylvania. Um, especially the route that they had me and the Mazda 3 just did a wonderful job of carving up the road, keeping me secure in place, very little oversteer, very little understeer. The infotainment system, 8.0 inch, all trims get it, so I'm very happy that Mazda does consistency that way. Um, it's just so easy to, to, to navigate and get things through as far as what you want to do with it. Um, no guesswork, not a lot of digging, everything is very intuitively placed. So well done there, uh, Mazda, on that. And if you go top trim, premium package, uh, you get the navigation as well, which really, really helped me out. Uh, heads up display, I generally don't like heads up displays. I know they're there to keep your eyes uh, more at an angle where it stays on the road as opposed to looking up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, and it's only like fractions of seconds. Um, but I found that it really, really helped. And uh, I'm happy that um, the Mazda 3 I had respect with it. And you know, I'm starting to appreciate it more and uh, I can tell you that I appreciated it quite a bit. And this uh, heads up display has the speed limit on the left side. Um, and the cool thing, another plus here, as uh, far as reasons I like it, is that it does the conversion to kilometers even if you're in the States. So if the speed limit was 55 miles an hour and I had my infotainment set to kilometers, it would give me the kilometer conversion right away and I know not only Mazda does that a lot of uh, maybe all manufacturers do that but it was just a cool little perk for me that I found uh, along my travels um, the gear shifting I purposely picked a manual vehicle for or manual transmission for my road trip um, because you know hashtag save the manuals and there's not a lot of them out there Mazda is one of the few manufacturers that still makes their top trim vehicle available with a manual transmission and I thought no better way to take advantage of it 
been a lovely long road trip through uh, through northern Pennsylvania's Route 6. The gears are so shift, so shift. The gears are so smooth <laughs> for size. Let's hope it's only two flubs for this video. So the gear shifting is really, really nice, very precise, um, very, very accurate. And you know, you get that boost, um, just downshift if you need to pass or you need to kind of go up a hill. And there's a lot of hills in Northern Pennsylvania. So Mazda, well done uh, there overall. And just the feel of the car is, is it's top quality for me. And it's and like I said in my initial reviews headline, or the headline for my initial review, it's minimalism meets marvelous. And there's only a few buttons in the center console, and there's not a lot happening on the dashboard. And I'll slip some B-roll in and now-ish to show you what the dashboard looks like if you haven't seen the interior of a, um, a twenty, sorry, twenty twenty Mazda three yet. But just it's so it's almost a luxury car for me there I said it out loud it's on the internet and just it's, it's such a clean design but it's it's all all the everything you touch is soft touch if the, the, the dashboard soft touch the armrests even of the little metal the leather piece here in red that you can see it's soft touch and I don't know if they did this purposely but there's three places to put your elbows I'm just gonna stop the car and I'll, and I'll show you here so to me this is too high all right you can see it looks really funny and my arm kind of goes down like that and this is nice, but when I put my, my, my but bam, when I put my there's my third flub, um, it feels a little low. But you can actually rest your elbow on this, and it actually sits tight, and it nearly lines up perfectly with the uh, nine and, or the uh, nine, nine o'clock mark on your uh, on your steering wheel. Uh, let's do one more little run, and then uh, I'll, well, I guess as I wrap up the video, uh, 2020 Mazda 3 does everything very well. It's it's fuel efficient, it looks great, it drives very well. Again, very little understeer, oversteer. The manual transmission is, it's one of my favorites overall. And yes, I've owned a Gen 1 Mazda 3, I've owned a Gen 2 Mazda 3, and then I got into the auto journalism world, so I didn't really need to have car payments. Um, but I do love my Honda Accord, shout out 2004 Honda Accord. Um, but yeah, 2020 Mazda 3, uh, one of my favorite new vehicles off the year. I love the redesign. I love the looks of it. The creature comforts, the interior styling, the comfort of the seats, technology, everything hits the right buttons and it does so uh, very affordably. The top trim, I believe, is 20, 27,000 and you get all this and you think you gotta pony up another couple grand to get to maybe even less than maybe 1300. Uh, I'll put the number at the bottom now uh, as far as what the premium package costs. But 2020 Mazda 3, one of my favorite new vehicles of the year. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on it, if you've driven it, if you like it, if you dislike it, uh, just chime in and let me know. It'd be great to talk to you. Um, all right, that's it. Stay tuned for my next review. I got the ending right. <laughs>